What is up everyone? Today is an exciting day. I say this all the time, but we have a lot of exciting days down here. A lot of exciting days. Uh, because we get to put parts on the 13B. Anything I can do to this car it makes me happy. It's been hard getting the, part, the parts in time for this thing, but we have some parts. I'm very sick today, and Spoon's not here, so I have Steve here as my energy for the day. Co-host. Uh, I'm going to make it happen, because I need to get some stuff done, because I leave for Australia on Friday, and I want to see more bits on this engine. So, we're going to get right after it. Steve, energy, give it to me. Let's do it! Oh! <laughs> Okay. I gotta go back to work, man, so I don't know what you want me to do. Sorry for getting you sick. That's all right. We're good. Everything's good. You? Dude, somebody got me. What do you mean? I like I wasn't the origination of the strain. Well, that's what you see one of your homies in the <laughs> you know shit I mean? zero. Somebody got me sick. I wasn't well, you see one of your homies in the friend group and you're like, oh, we're all doomed now. Yeah, Let's just blame DJ, all right? Donnie, it's your fault. Right now, the rotary just looks like a, um, like a suitcase. I don't know. It looks like something. It doesn't look, <laughs> doesn't look like an engine. Like a box. Like a suitcase. Porta potty. Like a, like a no, like a bowling ball bag. Like a kitchen appliance. Uh <laughs> air fryer. A uh, keg. A keg. It does look a little keg. So, uh, what transforms this into looking like something? Uh, manifolds, right? Oh yeah. Intake exhaust, right? So the exhaust isn't here yet, unfortunately. It is so gang, so I can't wait for the end. But what we do have is the intake manifold, and it's the first major piece of the puzzle. So uh, let's show it off. It's right here. Look at that. That's Good. terrible. Yes. It's beautiful. Bolting it right on. I'm gonna vapor hone it. I'm gonna take it to my spot. I'm gonna vapor hone it. I'm gonna get it real nice and clean for you, Jim. You ready? Right now. Didn't work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so I have something better. Let's check it out. <laughs> Ta -da! This is actually super freaking cool. Now, this intake is made by Elite. It is so gangster in so many different ways. First off, it just looks cool. Like, I'm, black. I'll just put it out there. Like, it just looks really freaking cool. Step number one right <laughs> on top of that um not only are all the runners now equal because before if you look at all the runners they're all kind of different lengths oh the outside ones are real long the inside ones are short these are all equal uh it's a nice juicy casting it has way bigger opening ports and one of the coolest parts about this intake is it offers o-rings uh, it is o-ring between nice. the lower and the, the lower and the upper right a lot of info to share here there is four secondary injectors on it versus just usually running two, which is nice because the FCs require a lot of fuel. One, getting air through it is one of your biggest limitations. And two, getting a fuel into it to actually make it uh, safely make the power it needs. And uh, by adding another set of two injectors on it, it's a lot easier to get fuel into the engine, right? Well, on top of that, we need a nice juicy throttle body to match. So I just got the... Uh, Oh man, oh, my head's not in the game today, guys. Uh, rotary works, uh, Bill and Throttle. I figured since we got a gangster and a rotary gangster, on it. Throttle body, right. What's the uh, difference? Yeah. This okay. is a second blade set of blades, so there'd be a throttle body on top of this, too. Look at that. That is oh. so sick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, mock this up real quick, just so you guys can see it as a, as a whole. The upper and lower are actually o ring together, which is uh, really nice. <laughs> That someone that takes with you boys. Don't stop me now. This is gonna make the thing look so freaking cool. Before we start setting up the fuel rail and everything else, I just wanna get the throttle body on it real quick just to see what it looks like on the engine. A little before and after. You know? I mean, at least the RW1 still does look a lot cooler than the S4 S5 one. That just needs some love. It's kinda crusty. The black one has more girth, I noticed. Yeah, way bigger runners. It's usually how it goes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the moment everyone's been waiting for. <laughs> this is the fun, like, instant gratification of it. There you go. Boom, look at that. Now it looks like a kitchen appliance with a really cool intake. <laughs> with a chimney on top. With a chimney on top. <laughs> So what goes in front? You're just gonna have like a juicy fan, big juicy awesome. fan. We like actually, that. that's the next thing that I'm hoping that we'll get later in the video, because I had to go pick it up, um, is we have the water pump housing, water pump, and then we have the accessories. So once we get the accessories on, uh, it'll actually look like a, like an engine, so. All the space, Steve, v -mount, all that space up here is what, for your V-mount radiator? Yeah, intercooler. Intercooler. We need a big juicy intercooler just for right here. Fill the void. Sick. Sick. Yeah, it's funny, because you have the smallest engine ever produced. Uh -huh. And one of the biggest engine bays you'll get out of an 80s or 90s car. Yeah. You could put a four rotor in here, it'd fit no problem. Put a popcorn machine, like pimp my rod. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this back off and actually get this thing set up to put onto the engine. So there's two sets of fuel runners, right? A primary and a secondary. Our primary is actually gonna bolt onto the engine itself and not the intake manifold. So if you look at it right here, boom. 
got these ports on the engine itself for the injectors to sit in. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy, Crazy right? Goodness. Since this is an FC engine, we need an FC rail because the FD rail actually has a slightly different offset. It's a pain. It's so close, but it is different. So right here we have an FD uh, lower fuel rail, and then we have this one that I got off of, well, somewhere on Google for an FC. Full function engineering. So as you can see, the DW one's a lot prettier, but they don't make an FC kit yet. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna. gonna. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's in prototype. I don't know if I'm allowed to share that, but sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> you can tell. Look at the only difference is the offset. It's like what five millimeters. You could probably, if you cared enough, you could probably make like a little bracket, yeah. make it work. But we have this bolt-on option. Since we have primary injectors and secondary injectors here, we have two sets of DW injectors, right? These works, right? Right here. Boom. We use it on everything. It has done us so good. I don't think I've ever had a feeling issue on any one of my cars because I have it loaded up with. Yeah. King injector size. How do you do it? Oh, it's such a mess. I don't know what I want. Uh, honestly, DW has a really accurate fuel injector calculator on their website. If you want to check it out, just Google fuel injector calculator. It'll come up and you can put in desired power off of what fuel, what engine, and uh, your max, duty, max injector duty cycle. And it's a really good baseline. But for this, I'm going to be around 500 horsepower, right? Or that's my peak. But I want max 500 horsepower on ethanol. That's kind of like the limitation to these housings too, right? And so um, to do so, uh, we are going to be using 1,200 primaries and 2,200 secondaries. Now, why not just oversize your injectors here, right? You could always ask that question. Why not do 2,200s all around and have plenty of fuel, right, Steve? Right, right, right. So when you get into the bigger injector sizes, um, they're harder to control at a lower pulse width, right? So at things like partial throttle or idle, the injector isn't doing as much work. It's a really really fast open and close, right? So for these bigger injectors, it's really hard to have a really consistent control when it's such a massive amount of fuel coming through. Honestly, injector tech these days are so good that that's really not much of an issue. But I have seen with 2200s, I don't care what brand it is, um, they're a little bit harder to control, especially on pump gas at idle. So try not to put 22s in primaries, unless you're on like methanol or something. Since uh, since these are gonna be my secondaries, I'm not gonna be worried about the small pulse width. But essentially when we need these, it's gonna be, here's a lot of fuel, right? So it's not gonna be controlling the small stuff like the idle and like the partial throttle, stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about making those oversized. So we did oversize on that, 2200s. Am I logical today? Yeah. My brain doesn't feel like it's working. 1200 cc's, primaries. Let's get them in there. Okay, so for our primaries, we actually have to put the special seat on it because the housings, are kind of awkwardly shaped for the OEM. There's like an OEM plastic bushing in there and obviously we don't have it, so we convert it to this piece. Yeah, that makes sense. So this literally, once you lube it up, just kind of sits right in there. Bang, bang. Right here, see this nice O-ring in there. Gives you a nice pedestal for it to sit in there. And then, boom. Make sure you lube it. Every time you use injectors, just lube the crap out of it. You don't want to pinch an O-ring and go start the car and just fuel everywhere. It sucks. Before we put the rail on, we're going to put some DW uh, and fittings on, just because they're going to be a lot harder to put on in the car than right now. Steve's just want to have fun. Oh, Steve's just want to have fun. Everything. Just wants to use lube. Lube. Lubing his nuts. This is fun, right? It's a good time. Yeah. <sighs> Hang with the boys, besides Jim Phil and little under the weather, but we're gonna get him right. Got my boy some soup on the way. <laughs> All right, boys, you're gonna be sick after this. Nah, we good, bro. <laughs> Fittings on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. So we did the primary, now it's time for the secondary. And as you guys can see, factory fuel rail only has two secondary injectors. Bing, ball, right there, right? This intake manifold comes with an extra two right here on the middle runners too, which is nice. So now you have four, four, which is sick because usually you just can't get enough feeling into these things. And if you're maxing out your injectors, boom, you have two more. Since we won't be maxing our injectors due to our power range, uh, we don't really need these two extra injector ports. Really dope to have, but in my case, I don't need it. So what we could do is we could throw in two dummy injectors since we're not gonna use it, basically a placeholder. We could put freeze plugs in there. We could put like expanding plug or something just basically to block these two holes. Uh, so. The kit comes with the four injector rail, right? But it is purple and it kind of clashes with our whole theme here. It is a cool color. Like I really do like this color. I kind of like how it's like a soft purple, but it doesn't really go with anything we have. So I'd really like to utilize our DW FD fuel rail. This is a, a, a Deesworks fuel rail for a standard plenum FD setup, uh, but it actually does fit on here. 
but it obviously doesn't have the spots for here, so maybe we could just kind of wedge two injectors in there you as a whole filler. So. We could figure something out. We'll figure out. something out. Let's just start shoving stuff in there and see how it goes. We got some ghost injectors in there. <laughs> you like those? Placeholders. They're placeholders. They're just kind of wedged in there. Jam them in. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it works. <laughs> It's literally just a hole, like a, a hole, an air hole in the intake. Will that affect anything or no? Zero. Won't even know they're there. Won't even know it's there. We got four injectors in. Right now, two of them are just dummy injectors, as you can tell. They're kind of just wedged between the rail and the intake itself. You see it? It's a little dark. Ready? Yeah. Boom. You see it? So these things aren't going to, I mean, literally all it is preventing it from having an air leak in the intake. That's it. So there's going to be no wires going to it, but you would never know. It feels weird, but at least it's better than a plug because I know these aren't going anywhere. Now we just got to throw our little DW and things on here. Bang, bang, boom. Fill the goods. Boom. Cool. So now let's mock this thing up and make sure it all fits together. There we go. All right, so now that we have this all together right now, we could actually start mocking up our fuel system, which is really good because that's a big pain in the ass part. Uh, but I'm going to go run out right now and go pick up our water pump housing so we can get the rest of our the accessories on because I really want to see that kind of all tied together. So, see you guys soon. And we're back. I still feel like butt, but I feel better, right, Steve? Look better. You got a haircut. Got tissues. <laughs> all right. So we got the water pump housing. Uh, this is the next piece of the puzzle to get uh, the engine together. This thing is ugly. The casting is hideous. If I had more time, I'd probably sand out the casting and powder coat it, but we have things to do. Yeah. Went to go mock this up real quick. I did vapor hone it, though, so it looks really nice. It's not spray paint. It's vapor hone. It's clean. It's clean. It's Just clean. really ugly casting. Sure. Was, was Ford... Still owning the company at the time, it seems real Ford like. Uh, when did Ford own just, Mazda? I'll turn it into a pride. Just <laughs> <laughs> all right, right. All right, so <laughs> quick issue. We went to go mock it up, boom, it hits the fuel rail. All right, maybe that's why the fuel rail that the intake comes with is shaped differently. That would make a lot of sense. This is just like a problem we just discovered on camera live that. Oh, I discovered it 30 seconds ago, but I want to, you know, I, I want to show them my discovery. discovery. So for now, we're going to take that fitting off and we're going to put this on and we're going to deal with that after the fact. Future gyms problem. It has a gasket, but I don't trust it. So we're going <laughs> to put a little bit of RTV on it. Small, thin layer. Just small, thin layer. You know, it's just like it's insurance. It's 2023. If you if you're installing something that doesn't have an O-ring, it's gonna make you feel some type of way. Yeah, it's a fact. You know. Then the casting on this thing is so bad that <laughs> like I just don't think it would seal without RTV. I hurt nobody unless you have a 2022 FRS or BRZ. <laughs> it's all in your oil pan. All right, major discovery. Before you RTV this thing, it looks like it uses through bolts on the water pump. <laughs> So these three bolts that attach it to the motor go through the water pump. So we have to put the water pump on the housing first. Never seen that before. I painted it black. Looks nice. The cast iron. This water pump. Yeah. Look at these. Look at the propeller on that thing. This is. Ca That's good. Cat. What is this? A 1964 Ford? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> Mazda had a bunch of foundries. It's a cast iron water pump. Someone's got to make an aluminum version of this. I just bought the wrong one, I guess. That's smooth. Good technique. It's like the smear and dime all in one. RTV and gasket. I learned how to do the square peg square hole when I was a kid. This is the shape call. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind my hardware, it's not the prettiest. There's art. Easy take. Alright. We're good. Everything's great. Hey, that's looking more complete. I love to see it. It's a little bit more like an engine, which is each piece of the puzzle. Silver black, silver black. It's just like the thing. So we need to modify this uh, this water neck later on, but we're gonna put it here as a place filler just so we could fill, figure out the fuel rail situation later. It's always hard, like building a completely different car you've never built before, completely from scratch, because you have to have every nut and bolt. Because we didn't get anything. You know what I mean? Like we got the shell and we got a pair of rotors. Be more experienced. I'll be more time. experienced next time, yeah. <laughs> water pump housing and water pump is on, and so now we can actually get the rest of the accessories on and make this engine a little bit more complete. So next thing I think we might have to do some back and forth here. Uh, let's get the alternator mounted. Think we could do that? 
still, I think. I have no idea where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> this bolts onto the water pump housing right here. What I did just learn <laughs> 10 seconds ago is that I don't have the tensioner for the alternator. It's actually supposed to be an arm that comes here and it's gonna be a tensioner for the belt that bolts up the other end of the alternator, which I guess I have to order it. I thought we were good, I thought I had everything, <laughs> but we don't have that, so that's not a big deal. I'll order that up, but for now we're gonna put this here as a placeholder for all the accessories. That's it, but that's all we have. We don't have, a, we don't have the air conditioning, we don't have a power steering pump, we have nothing, it's just this alternator. Easy, love that. Oh my God, what kind of wrench is that? It's a 14 with a 10 millimeter on the back? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that even come from? But what I did forget to mention that this is actually an FD alternator, uh, which is nice for two reasons. Usually the, or actually three. They're easier to get, right? You can buy these at the auto parts store, easier than an FC alternator. Two, they usually have higher amperage, which is really nice, right? We love more amps. And on top of that, uh, it, it uses a rib style belt versus using a V-belt because the S4, S5 FC engines actually use a V-belt. Like it's 19. Old school shit. Old school shit. So now you can just buy those in like regular stores. Boom, boom. Well, so now we have to put on our pulley kit that actually converts the rest of the pulleys to the typical rib belt, unlike the FC, which is a V belt, which is old. Ancient. Tech. Ancient. So this bolts right up. Um, the pulley is wrong. It doesn't have the right offset to work with this kit. So you have to buy a whole pulley kit if you want to run the FD alternator. Love that. So now this should line up. Perfect with the water pump. How's it look? Good? Yes. Good, good news. Something works. Rare. <laughs> oh no, this, okay, I spoke too soon. So we actually don't have enough threads right here to fully get the nut on, so we'll machine that later, but we're gonna move on. <laughs> next step, car things, <laughs> whatever. So, next piece of the puzzle is the pulley for the eccentric shaft. Basically our crank pulley, right? Crank, it's not a crank, eccentric shaft pulley. Boom, get it, right? Simple, right? Just a pulley. But the only thing we're gonna be doing differently is we're gonna be adding this uh, gear, it looks like, right? Uh, this is going to be our new point of pickup for our crank sensor, right? Here we go. And this should make it look pretty complete. Boom, that looks sick. It's looking like something. That looks like a real mechanical vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So this is where this is supposed to go, but I don't have the tensioner for this. So we're gonna leave the bell off for now. But that's it, that's all we have for water pump, alternator, uh, eccentric pulley. Simplistic. Simplistic, I love it. The next step is dealing with this, right? This is the last bit of tape we have here, right? So what goes here, Steven? What does go there? I don't know. Originally, there's this big sensor that goes all the way down on a gear and it picks up and it's actually your crank sensor. Eccentric uh, sensor? Uh, what'd I say? Crank sensor. A centric shaft sensor? Yeah. Engine position sensor. That's what we're gonna say, right? That's old tech. It's ugly, so we're gonna upgrade to something different. And we are gonna be using our engine position pickup nice. off the front right here. Looks like a little cast iron skillet. Exactly. So first, let's get this thing off of here and uh, plug this hole since we're not using it. And it's 80s electronics, all right? How accurate could that be? It's O-ring, so it should be. Oh, that's pretty. That looks cool. Yeah. Silver and black. What a buy. Yeah. Boom. Hole filled. Let's uh, mount the sensor. Oh, this just slips on right here. That's a cool piece. Oh, I gotta sneeze. Oh, I gotta uh, sneeze. Two. I have our new engine position sensor. I like the eccentric shaft sensor. Eccentric shaft. Eccentric shaft sensor. Yeah. Eccentric shaft sensor. Good old pass. case of the tongue twister. Eccentric shaft sensor. Eccentric shaft shifter. So now we have some modern tech on this thing, so the ECU actually knows exactly where the engine is, because that 80s tech, the link would be pissed off. It would be stoked. Yeah, I think this was cheaper than an OEM one off eBay. I would do that. Highly suggest. Do that. Right, Steve? Do that. This is where you shoot time in. That thing? That's, that's how the engine knows where it is now. See all the teeth that moves by it? Yeah. And then see how there's a big gap here? Mm -hmm. it, it knows where position is based off that big gap. That measurement. Yeah, yeah. Math. Let them cook. <laughs> just found out these are studs, which is sick. They look a lot better without them. Now we just bolted in. Yeah, that looks a lot nicer. 
big fan of that. So the engine's looking pretty complete. Uh, I love to see it. Uh, for now, the big thing we're waiting on is the exhaust manifold to get the turbo on and start running all of that. And then of course, we also have to finish up the fuel system, which we did find out the standard rail doesn't fit because it gets too close to this. But of course, the, the intake came with a, uh, its own rail, which I believe sits higher, which is out of the way. And uh, the only reason why we didn't use it, it's a really beautiful rail, uh, is the fact that it's purple. And it just kind of, I mean, it would look cool. I mean, like, it'd be a nice accent piece. Like, I don't hate it, but it's just kind of clashes with our theme here. Before we let you, let you guys go for the day, uh, Steve learned a, a new uh, trick that he wants to try out before you leave yourself. So. I'm gonna call it a mod. Let's do it. Let's go, <laughs> science. So the trick to this is, uh, it's not actually paint, so it's not like regular removing paint. And for some reason, this one brand of oven cleaner just cooks, I don't know, it just cooks the best, apparently. Right, got the stuff in it. it it's it's just pretty gnarly stuff. Guys, be careful with this stuff if you're gonna, if you do this at home, you get this on your skin, not a good time. Keep away from the kids. Clean the hell out of your oven though. Clean the hell out of your <laughs> oven and uh, get some anodizing off of this. Uh, Jim, what do you say? I'm just gonna let it cook real quick. Yeah, yeah, blow that thing up. It's so nice looking that I feel bad to do this, but. Um, it's just the purple guys. The rail is beautiful, honestly. It's just, we're not, not, purple guy. We're not running purple, so. Like, a lot, Steve. A lot, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at it already just dripping off. Is it really? Uh, that's coming right off. Holy shit. Usually it takes a little bit longer. Hold on. That's all, right, like all right, let us see. Instant, in bro. That's why. That's, that's crazy. That's how they, they, they sell that in the store without a warning on it. <laughs> like, <Whoa. laughs> Be careful. Yeah, look at it. It's falling off. Wow. That's wow. pretty. That's oh, wild. Yeah. That's a toxic yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get it on your skin, Steve. Yeah, I'm gonna get some gloves, but I love this mod already. I've used this stuff before, but I've never seen it actually. Work. Look at Holy that, that shit. We'll like take it off that fast. That's pretty gnarly. You gotta be careful though, because it does stain the aluminum underneath. You can see it, see how it's all stained. Just cause it's, I mean, it's like chemically etching it. So if you do use this to remove anodization off of like, you know, a lot of times you'll get like cheap and fittings and stuff and you wanna take it off. Um, but you're gonna have to kind of almost polish it afterwards cause look at it. Kind of does stain it. Let them cook. We should have just like put it in a bowl. <laughs> Honestly. I just filled the bowl up. Yeah, for yeah. real. All right, so we have the spacers for the rail, and then we have these cups that we actually use to raise the injector. Like a little candy necklace. <laughs> I'm surgical with this thing. So Steve Don't get out of the paint. No, I got you. Steve, not a science guy. That purple didn't stand a chance. Let me clean this up real quick. So boom, that's what you get. Comes off, but you kind of mess up the aluminum a little bit. So this is a really good point where we take a DA, it's nice and flat, mm -hmm. sand it real quick, hit it with the polish, boom. Easy, that's it. So we'll polish these up though, Don, and then we'll have the- Bring them back to life. Yeah, the one Back rail. to life, back to reality. All right, before I let you guys go though, Steve, let's just use some YouTube magic so they can see the results. One, two. Boom, so I went with a little brush finish I think it looks a lot nicer and polished, at least in this situation. That's it, easy. Easy off, scotch bright, and you're good to go. So we'll get this on, get the fuel system tidied up, and uh, what's on my forehead? A little bit of, a little smush. A little easy off or something. Uh, probably. <laughs> well, boys, I'm gonna get this set up. I'm gonna get a cup of tea, blow my nose, go home, get some rest. But uh, we got some progress on today. Uh, it's looking like an engine. Hopefully the manifold comes in before I leave for Australia this weekend. Which is pretty crazy. I'm gonna be in Australia next week. It's wild. Can't believe you're leaving us again. I feel really bad about it. <laughs> this trip came out fast. They're like they said the dates, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's next week. I was like, what? It's supposed to be this really cool inlet for this right here. I swear to God, we had it here. We tore the whole shop up looking for it, but that'll be in too, hopefully. We got a lot of stuff to do. Good progress. Next time you see me, hopefully my brain actually works, and it's not like a. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to give a huge out more time to Elite Intake. Uh, this is the coolest piece of puzzle. Like, this makes the whole setup. Like, I'm so, so, so stoked we were able to grab one of these things uh, because not only is it gonna perform amazing, it absolutely looks phenomenal. So, of course, if you guys wanna cop one for yourself, link in description. It is like a must. Uh, but for now, uh, you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more content. And Steve, have a good evening. It's